hasn't had as much public expo right. exposure until recently. Um, I do think that you're onto a, a little bit of something there where sometimes, uh, like, however the set starts to go, it kind of continues to go that way. Mm -hmm. So this first match might be very pivotal uh, as far as that goes. But also at the same time, you know, Deep Blues can kind of be a little bit like that sometimes. They fair, can, fair. They, they can have the momentum. So I, I think that uh, this could really swing wildly in any direction and maybe change midway through the set. We'll just kind of, we're going to have to look at this first game as kind of a primer to see what we can expect. And what, else, what best to do it on other than Black Belly Zones here coming out, starting off. We'll see Day, of course, with that scope coming out soon. Oh, that's going to be a quick snipe at the top of the map accordingly. Uh, Day on that left side with a great vantage point here to get things started. And hopefully with the rest of the team able to push on up. as a 3v3 in the middle. Still anyone's game at this point. Yeah, this opening gambit right now, uh, not referring to you, of course. <laughs> uh, it's, it's in Deep Blues' favor, but it's not necessarily dominantly so. In fact, Deep Blues being the first team to lose a member in the ensuing uh, take back from in control. So let's see how in control is able to do this. We see some specials coming down. Dave being forced all the way back. He almost has ball already, so he can offer some sort of resistance to the setup, but I think that he's better off holding it for the push with the rest of his team. Mm -hmm. This Charger being able to use Baller in this kind of situation is why you see the Kenta Charger picked on Black Belly compared to, you know, the normal Stingray on other maps. So we'll see how that's able to be useful for his team. Now we have two Ballers and Missiles at the ready from Deep Blues. Missiles go down. Ballers start moving up. We see the Slasher Deco to the right using Baller. We see the, the Charger potentially to the left might jump down and take out Savage here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No, he's actually all the way over to the right. So these specials go off from Deep Blues, but it doesn't really seem like they actually got much to gain from it. Yeah. Uh, in control, able to kind of hold afterwards. They're not getting points right now. Deep Blues is kind of cycled over here to the right side of the map. Whoa, wow, yeah, my goodness. That was uh, that felt like something of a 180 there, Day, with the quick snipe on there. Marsh able to help to boot with it, but unfortunately going to drop dead towards the zone over there, and it's going to be in control still. Well, somewhat in control. Yeah. Savage kind of having the same reaction to seeing Deep Blues in that half-life area. It's like, oh, look, Deep Blues is over there. And then Deep Blues is just like, kill. <laughs> <laughs> but it, all, after all that said and done, it seems like In Control is still able to kind of hold down the map in this situation. Uh, it, it seems like Deep Blues kind of not getting much out of their special earlier on really is what cost them so far. Uh, and yeah, no, so far it, it seems like that, uh, but hopefully with the baller it may be able to make a statement, open up some pain for them to swim through and get to the middle of the map quicker. But unfortunately it's a 1v2 sure in the middle, at least something of a trade there, but will that be enough? It's still a 2v4 and surprisingly throughout this entire game that's been what I've seen consistently is losing right, you know, coming out of the base, maybe one or two dropping off for, separate from the remainder of their team. And it feels like In Control will be able to wrap this one up in a dominating fashion. My goodness, if they needed an emphatic start, to any set, if any team needed it, it was definitely in control and they showed up. I mean, we said it before it started, you know, the, the momentum of this set is going to be a huge factor and for both teams. And it's, you know, I think a lot of people were expecting Deep Blues to have a performance in that mm. style, you know, just a knockout. And no, it ended up being in control. So this is now the point in time where we look at Deep Blues as, you know, this 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 experienced top team. Like, how are they going to bounce back from this loss? Uh, is there going to be, you know, a kind of a momentum like failure right. uh, from them? Mm. Uh, or are they going to be able to kind of, you know, keep it up now we did see a lot of skilled snipes out of day in that kind of situation and when you when you're looking at a team that like is like deep blues that has five members where they can kind of like coach and they can kind of swap members in and out the question becomes okay well are they going to swap out you know because it's been day and mm -hmm. prodigy that right that's right swap, swapping out so are they going to make that swap and i mean from our perspective it seemed like day might have been the best performer on the t uh, you know, as far as like you know, mechanical skills go, mm. he, he seemed to be the, the one that's performing the hottest right now. So I don't know if switching in. They're switching. Is a, oh, yeah. they are switching. Yeah, they are okay. switching. Yeah. Well, they. Uh, I don't know if that's part of the counter pick. I don't know if that's part of any other kind of opening strategy. Yeah. But it looks like we are going to be seeing Prodigy in the Rainmaker pick on the Reef. Okay, so um. Obviously, there is the option to go blah blobber out of uh, Prodigy. He's kind of known for being one of the few member, few people in the West that's actually good enough with that weapon to make it work mm -hmm. in tournament play, because uh, that is normally not the case <laughs> when it comes to such a difficult to play weapon. Um, we also, you know, th this is also a situation where I mean, it's Deep Blues and it's Rainmaker. So if there is going to be, mm -hmm. <laughs> they have your, <laughs> they have your tag up on the, we can't see it on the stream, but uh, Deus has taken a picture of uh, Irix's account and is showing it to the audience with our, uh, with our player cam. But um, I mean, you know, if you're deep lose and you need a way to bounce back, having Rainmaker be game two probably is that way. Deep Blue's known for being for all, yeah, monsters. For <laughs> out of all the teams, uh, yeah. Marsh has, of course, gotten number one in the world in Rainmaker in the past. So, yeah. if, you know, the, not only is the team good at Rainmaker, but individually they're also good at Rainmaker. So this is, uh, this is basically as good 
of a comeback potential that they can be given. So great for them. We'll see if they're able to execute on it. Uh, they're going to be using a different roster than we saw last time. Uh, we won't be seeing any more of Days and Saints Snipes, at least for one more game. But um, I really think that deep, deep, it's in Deep Blue's favor, Deep Blue's interest to win this next game. Um, yeah, I know. And I think, uh, and conversely, we were kind of saying the same things about pickup grade, you know, the, the last time. Yeah, oh, great pick. This deal's, you know, perfectly organic for their composition to succeed yeah. in. And on the other side of that coin, it's, well, if you mess up and it, it doesn't turn out the way you need it to. Then you're in big, you're in, big no no bad. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And, and especially. And I, I can I can see that going the other way completely, just given what Rainmaker the Reef really is. It's, yeah. it's one slip up, and, and that could be the game. Yeah. Well, that's also kind of why Deep Blues, you know, chooses maps like this for Rainmaker, because they know that they are able to just knock it out. Yeah. You know, like, you're, they're probably going to have Marsh on... I would say Dapples. He can also go Kensa Mini. It's more, of a, it's more of a stable pick than Dapples. Mm -hmm. It accomplishes some of the same things. Like, we saw it last game, the Toxic Mist is usually a sub weapon that's not too valuable but when it comes to rainmaker being able to throw this toxic oh. miss in a way that rainmaker can at the pass, ramps leading up to yeah, yeah oh, it's so gosh, important it's, yeah, yeah. And there's also a bunch of jumps so um the way the mechanics work with uh jumping is that uh you're if you're in toxic mist you get half jump height mm -hmm. so there's also a lot of jumps that if the rainmaker tries to move up a certain way where the jumps involved like he can't even make it up the steps or right, something like that right. so um that comes in handy a lot but uh right now it really comes down to deep blues being able to get back map control and get picks because uh, basically what was their downfall last time was their inability to use their specials to get back the map mm -hmm. now we'll have to see how dapples. they played out dapples coming in from marsh this time around We'll take which uh, which blob is that out of Prodigy? It is the vanilla blob. Yep. All right, mm. so it's going to be the wall one. A uh, wall is also a nice tool for stopping the Rainmaker from walking. It turns out that if there's a wall, you can't walk down the hallway. <laughs> and there are a <laughs> lot of tight hallways to take the Rainmaker on this map, so we'll see how that works out. Nice use of the wall as a, as a, a sort of counter to the tent shield. Now, of course, the tent shield has more health than the wall, so you still need to put some, some damage into the tent shield. But you know that basically tents are used to being able to just kind of use their shield as a free way to push up. So when you have wall weapons that are stopping that, it can really put a damper on the you know the tent's confidence and ability to move forward and do what they were going to do. Booyah Bomb does come out right next to the Rainmaker. Oh, Unfortunately, doesn't get them, but forcing them down to the bottom. Nicely positioned Booyah Bomb there to force Marsh out towards the bottom there. Now, Savage playing it safe here. We do have at least ZZZ be able to at least use that scope, get some vantage point here, and, and uh, help them control the narrative of at least where this Rainmaker might go, which seems like they're tending towards the right side here. Hammer does come out, at least able to get at least one splat there, but non-zero amount of ejected to be played. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what's going on. Well, there are some picks, so picking up the Rainmaker actually now not the best idea. And it seems like Deep Blues was able to get the picks out of the situation and start getting a little bit of map control. So that's actually a pretty good thing for them. This is what we wanted to see out of the Marsh picking up the Rainmaker, the least surprised I've ever been to see such a thing. As now, wh where are the points going to go? The Marsh right now is moving over to the left. He's waiting for these missiles to clear out, and he's going to start diving forward to get points. His teammates are being taken out, so he knows he's just going to basically have the suicide point this time. Hammer actually that was used perfect. unsuccessfully. This is really huge. Even if he doesn't get that many points, he's wasting the specials go, go. of the enemy. Two specials now being used to take out Marsh. He's still alive. Someone behind him, but he's able to keep moving. Will the sniper be able to do this? I don't know if they necessarily can. The pro finally able to take out Marsh. But that that was kind of huge from Deep Blues, even though they're down in numbers right now. And, you know, in control is going to be able to get some specials later. There were two specials wasted that was against to take all out Marsh. odds they lost some members yeah like that 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 basically was just a resource sponge yeah. from deep blues they're going to be able to take back mid map control the rainmaker is going to reset and in control is still kind of stuck in the base yeah and it's this one i mean i think they're slowly going to be able to start breathing now especially as the rainmaker was you know reset <laughs> but thankfully enough uh deep <laughs> the blues. audience wanted to see that hammer hit so bad. <laughs> you always want to see that hammer hit marsh here pushing up on the right side stingray but should be able to stop this one this time around three Members going down, but so far, this counter pick has gone. Ooh, Dreas, there you go. It's been everything they needed it to be at this point. And, and Taylor will go down, surely, but they should be able to take their time and, and slow the pace of the game at this point, if nothing else. Now Savage here looking for the, the answers to be able to say, OK, I need to be forward thinking here in a place that we've been stuck in our base the entire time. We need to start getting something going here. Lob shots. We'll see if they can get that going towards maybe the tree left side of the map as she's kind of acting as the, the front line here well, alongside with Quake oh, as the Rainmaker starts to put, starting to push on the left side here. 
Now, of course, 51 is in no way anything close to a game-winning push. Not at map. all. It is so easy to push into the 30s. But uh, Deep Blue still holding the lead. Dreyas getting another pick. Nice preemptive sloshes right there. Using that splash damage to control space, which is the hallway, which we knew someone was going to be at. Looks like he might end up getting a revenge pick. No, he actually saves his teammate. Uh, Prodigy responding from a different killer map. And now Deep Blue's are starting to push up again. So they are starting to get a push going towards the end of the game. A member of In Control is down. There are some split spawns, but Deep Blue's isn't making the best round, so they're not really getting any points on the board yet, but it seems like Deep Blues is kind of comfortably sitting here with map control. There are some back and forth picks. If CMO gets this back, yeah. this could actually be bad for Deep Blues. Yeah, no, it actually could be. I mean, we only have like around three, uh, no, yeah, three members down on the half of Deep Blues now and plenty of time and room to breathe. And now, it's just a matter of what uh, what you know what avenue are they going to choose here? So you yeah, know what right, that umbrella, this has been yeah. an uncomfortably low scoring rainmaker. Yeah, game. no. So it, if anyone gets a even a moderate push at this moment, that could spell disaster for the team that does it. Because you know how are you going to be able to get those points back if you only have like thirty seconds left? Even though it's easy to score on this map, the the threat of That's being taken out is huge. That's going to be lead at least to the 40-point marker. I mean, obviously, it's still not exactly what, you know, is the most game-breaking lead. But at this point, they're getting into the 20s, the 15. What just happened in the last few seconds? Bob Albert does come out, but... Wow. Complete loss of structure from the Deep Blue side there. A, a game that was being carried completely from minute to minute by Deep Blue's members dictating what was happening. No longer the case in a matter of 30 seconds, and that being the game. Yeah, and it looks like they're not happy about what happened there. I mean, that 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 uh, that last push, it got stopped at the 40-point mark, and it looked right. pretty stable. It was almost as if like we we looked at the members that were alive, we looked mm. at the situation, and we said, okay, this is the end of the push because Deep Blues are all alive around the Rainmaker. There's no one really from Control nearby, mm. and then somehow Deep Blues members just started going down in Control, just started pushing up, and ended up being a knockout. So that is not what Deep Blues wanted to see on their counter pick. They are going to have one more counter pick in their favor. And after that, it is all in Control's counterpick. So any reverse sweep at this point, two out of the three maps are going to be on the enemy's turf. Absolutely. Waiting on the counterpicks coming in, of course. And Deep Blue's still in a good position to make their moves. But, I mean, that that that, that had to be it, you yeah. know, in a lot of ways, especially the mode they, they generally prefer. I, I don't, I'm and pretty I sure we might not. Tower control. We saw Sturgeon last time. Mm. I don't know if that's the kind of thing that Deep Blues would pick. Is that a sub we're seeing there on the left side of our screen? It looks uh. like actually Day is subbing in for Marsh. So that's the first time we've seen anyone besides Prodigy and Day swap out. So um, Prodigy is going to be able to pick something that's not Blob, or that he will pick Blob and they'll counter pick a map that has some kind of longer range. Oh, definitely not. Tower Control, Mako Mart. So this is definitely a level that it's going to favor uh, the aggressive plays that are possible out of Deep Blue's members. Um, I mean, I haven't really seen Prodigy playing close range weapons in tournament mm. in recent memory, but he's been playing plenty of, uh, uh, you know, slaying and mid-range weapons. So having Day on Charger, having that Stingray at the ready, and... Um, you know, having Prodigy on a more, uh, you know, midline focused weapon to support Dreyas and Taylor getting those picks. That's a good idea. I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit curious about the pick of Mako Mart mm -hmm. simply because this historically is a map where you don't need a backline to win, right? right. So if you're going to throw in Day, are you going to throw him into a map where it's like you don't need a charger? Hmm. Seems a little bit weird to me. But at the same time, just because you don't need a charger to win on this map doesn't mean a charger is a bad thing on this map, especially with the way that we saw Day able to get picks on Black Belly, which is you know traditionally seen as a close range map. You know, right. not the best for snipers. Uh, no, he was he was you know tearing heads off. So. Uh, I, I still expect him to be able to perform. Um, uh, we'll see how this plays out for Deep Blues. You know, uh, it, it seemed that their strategy of, you know, swapping in either Day or Prodigy, depending on the desired backline, it, you know, that isn't, that's now suddenly not the strategy. So we'll see how it works out for them taking out Marsh for the first time, having both of these players that have basically been playing nothing but backline all tournament. Yeah. But let's see if this, if this change up is what they needed. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it has to be, right, in a lot of senses of it. So Deep Blue's backs against the walls. And unfortunately for them, uh, even if they do win this again, counterpick's going in in Control's favor. Yep. So. But, like, as in Control, like, what are you actually picking that Deep Blue's is not going to be able to excel at? Because they do have that ability to swap out players and swap out styles and mm -hmm. maps and moods and comps and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, while on one hand, 
in control is going to have these counter picks coming up should Deep Blues win this next game. At the same time, I mean, I think Deep Blues is going to be flexible enough to play them. So it's not really, I don't think they're going to be seeing picks that Deep Blues is bad at in any kind of um, no, it's stretch. Really, it, I think it's going to be more you know in control just picking stuff that they're personally confident in sure. and just seeing if Deep Blues is able to be as good at the game as them. I think it's always just been about that execution for Deep Blues, right? Yep. It, I mean, the, it's always just like been there in the people, in the leadership. It's just yep. like the moments are there and then they're not. And maybe more notably for them than some of the other teams, honestly. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's something that obviously... It's game three, backs against the wall. If you want Deep Blues to make this run, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Because at this point, they'll need all of your support going forward. We'll see in control in the green, Deep Blues in the blue as this game. <laughs> Where, what else would they be? You know, what else would, yeah, exactly. All right, so we kind of see the uh, the setup that we expected out of Deep Blues Prodigy going with that Kensa on the cover bell. These armors might end up playing a big role in Deep Blues' ability to outslay the enemy. Now, of course, the enemy has armor as well. Day already getting a pick here. Deep Blues finally loses something. A little bit of back and forth at the beginning of the game here. I don't think we're going to see any kind of situation to lead some points on the board, but we Two are down. going to kind of get a taste of how the slaying will be playing out in this game. Needs it on. Unfortunately, not Great able jump. to get Day has to retreat. The CMO on the tower will be Taylor approaching and nice Hello. able to get the shots where they needed him. Taylor going to get revenge killed by Savage right there. She's going to try to play objective. Dreyas right here with the baller is going to push her back. It seems she's retreated far enough. Dreyas is going to pop somewhere where she, he's not going to be able to get revenge killed. At least one. And Deep Blues now has uh, more members on the map. And it, never mind. <laughs> it's just going to be more back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. And Booyah Bomb is ready for Savage to be able to at least siphon off players. The approaching players for Deep Blues maybe off to the left side of the map. We'll have to see here. But wanting to support Quake here as they might be coming, getting some incoming fire on the right side. Stingray does come out. Maybe it's yes. starting to push them one way to another. But... It doesn't seem like it's going to be the most effective things. Okay, one pick maybe happening. It's the Brella. That's an important pick. And they'll go ahead and super jump back to base. So Maybe not so much in that situation, though, because the only member that was in control that got taken out was the member that had just used special. So everyone else is going to have their specials available. Right. There's going to be a Stingray. There's going to be a Bomb. There's going to be Missile. So this push from Deep Blues is going to be halted, basically, it is not immediately. Be a push. I yeah. don't think they even have an armor to do anything about it. So we're going to see Day going down here. Prodigy also going to be taken out. Now, there is a Missile on the side of Deep Blues. Should Taylor survive the situation? He does not. That is a full wipe. In control is going to be able to start pushing very quickly. Day going to have to work really Really hard on getting Stingray in this, time. Yep. It looks like the Booyah Bomb and the Missiles are going to be the first specials, it, you know, available to the Blues to stop this push. Yeah, I would argue that the, the picks and the, just the survivability for the two members from Deep Blues that came out from the start, super important here. And the, yep. the fact that they're still up, important in, in and of itself. But they're approaching that second checkpoint, and they don't have too much time to get a grasp of this one going forward. Booyah Bomb will go out towards where the tower is, but now Deep Blues being able to approach it has the Slosher and plenty of paint going towards it. It shouldn't be for too much longer there. Taylor Great. now at least getting one splat, but it won't be one, one more splat than that. Savage able to survive for quite a while here in this in this altercation, but will she be able to survive for a little bit longer to be able to recuperate this push? Oh, maybe potentially. Gosh. Nice pick on the Prodigy and maybe more to come. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Savage being an asset to the team despite the roster change from what we were used to, but it seems like Savage is able to get those picks and support her team as needed. Now there is another opportunity for In Control to push. We see a Booyah Bomb ready. I think an armor just went, I'm um, sorry, a missiles just went down. Deep Blue's getting into position to do something about this. Armor shows up to try to stop any sort of damage on the tower to stop this push, but it looks like the missiles are going to be effective at at least stopping In Control from fighting for now. Yes, Taylor's going to be able to follow up on that. Important. A Stingray at Dr. Prodigy may or may not get the kill. Oh, armor doesn't go up the time, not. but it's a 3v1 situation. This is Deep Blue's chance to actually push back. And oh, do they got away. This. Okay, there. He only has four points of yeah. special. Does not. Deep Blue's know that? How will they play out this situation? They need to make a big push, and it seems like it's starting now. Hopefully starting now. I mean, we do see at least plenty of room in front of them, but they don't want to be too aggressive with it, especially with the tower getting back a little bit. So we'll see Dreyas now pushing a little bit more as the tower is firmly in, under their control. Stingray is ready. Baller as well, if they want to get things going. The Tenem Missiles will at least put a pause on this one while the remainder of the in-control members are able to There's get no to that tower. Yeah, you're right. The in-control members, they are trying to do something about this, but Deep Blues has a special advantage right now. There's an armor ready and now a ball already from Deep Blues. Let's see if they're able to get past the second checkpoint. This will be a really big deal if they're able to. Yep. The second checkpoint tends to be the no game. Specials. The baller almost gets the pick on CMO right now. If CMO is able to stop this, Can it really CMO comes win this? down to that survival. They get the lead. Yep, they get it. 
And that's going to be Deep Blues getting into the lead there, into the 20s towards the final checkpoint, maybe. Armor. Stingray might be enough to stop this one, but Armor might be ready as well. Day at the ready with special, if needed. Prodigy here, uh, it will be a couple of members from In Control just zooming on in via the zip lines to the tower, but it won't be enough. Nothing in time, and two to one, the response that was absolutely needed from Deep Blues. And if there's anyone to feed off momentum here in Wisconsin, Dells Hitzel, it will be Deep Blues. Oh, I'm sure Deep Blues, they, they are obviously hungry. They, that is the strongest push that we have seen out of Deep Blues all day. There's been a lot of back and forth, and they've had their moments of, like, you know, controlling the map and controlling objective, but that's the first time where they completely just stomped yeah. through their opponents. You saw all kinds of forward thinking. You saw... Uh, the use of specials to negate the, the use of enemy specials. Like, you know, the, they were thinking well ahead, you know, uh, Stingray goes off, armor's mm. already ready. You know, Done, yeah. You know, the, you know, this thing goes off, missiles are ready. There, there was a lot of clear indications that Deep Blues had their heads in the game. They were thinking clearly, and they were able to work together as a team behind their slaying skills to get that huge momentum shift. And now we are going into some counter picks from In Control. I don't know what to expect out of them. We haven't seen In Control pick a map yet in the storm, but this is the first time doing so. So I think that what we find out of them will be indicative of what kind of maps they feel that they are good at. Mm -hmm. And again, it's going to come down to the question, will Deep Blues be able to be as better than at the game than in control because uh, I, I again i don't really think that you can pick stuff that's bad for deep blues necessarily mm. you can only pick things that are good for in control right clam bits being the next mode and it's going to be monta maria this time okay. around we haven't seen this uh today so far of course and let alone a clam blitz game so far how about you think this pans out for your three teams here especially deep blues so um, I know that Deep Blues is particularly, you know, well versed in this map. Uh, when it comes to Rainmaker, this is one of their best maps. I mean, they have that, you know, one wipe knockout strategy where they can, they they can if they if they get a wipe at the beginning, they can get Marsh to the goal before the enemy team has a chance to spawn. And look but up it the ledge. Is. It's kind of stupid. Right. I, I, you know, <laughs> in in, uh, in scrims against them with Clockwork, it's like. You know how sometimes you know you're in those scrims and you know you play a map and you get knocked out really mm. quick and it's like right, can we replay that dude? Like yeah. Against the Blues, it'd be like you know the, the third time on Manta Maria and you get knocked out right away again. You're like whatever, just, yeah. just move on. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this. We're done, done with that bit. Yeah. But uh, Clan Blitz a different story though. De definitely a different story. And I, and I but I wonder. I mean, given just the presence of mind from that last game of just again to your point of how are they responding to these hi very high level thoughts of okay specials coming out we're reacting to it very with a very premeditated, coordinated, we know what is going to happen. Yeah. And Clan Blitz requires that exact same kind of energy, that mental thought, which... Yeah, which, yeah I mean, that is true, yeah. right? Like, the skills that Deep Blues was showing us in that tower control game, you know, they're thinking ahead, they're using the specials properly, they're pushing the right way and getting, you know, getting the picks without specials and then blasting forward with specials being yeah. used, not just to, like, oh, we're pushing, so I'm going to click the right stick. It's like, no, all of it was premeditated, and that's exactly the kind of teamwork that's required in Clan Blitz. One of the reasons why, unlike when Clan Blitz came out, the community actually um, adores Clan Blitz at this point because of the high-level teamwork that's actually required to play it now that we've gotten to know the game. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be where Deep Blues' heads are right now. We'll see how that ends up working out. Now, it seems that Marsh... A little bit more yeah. acceptable, so we'll have to see. One no, unfortunately, it is. It is wait, not no, there purple. there is a blue and purple. No, it's blue. It's it's purple and green. All right. Well, both teams are half blue. <laughs> I remember third grade art class. Right and blue. Those color wheels. Uh, yeah. Look at that tenebrilla. We haven't seen the camo tent yet, and I've been saying it all weekend. This I think this is one of the best weapons in the game. We see the uh, you know the main one speed that seems normal. The QR that is standard right now. Right. And uh, we see some main saver. So basically, uh, pretty pretty you know straightforward. We also see an ink brush coming out of deep blues. We have not seen an ink brush yet today. So this is going to be a lot of uh, you know new stuff for us. Perfect. And that's going to be Brodity getting the getting the pick after waiting on that wall. But ZZ, oh, it's playing aggressive with that flowing You get Maybe a kill. Another, ooh, that's going to be a baller. A Can you run away? No, you can. Not the hammer comes out as well, and Deep Blue is able to respond appropriately there. I think that was three down on the behalf of In Control there. 
Yeah, that was a very strong opening for the Blues, and they are collecting the clams required to capitalize on this. They just need the specials. The baller is ready, probably ready to push up. Another baller about to be ready. After that, missiles are going down. One baller is used. Dreyas right now trying to survive long enough to jump away with this power clam. He does not. So we'll see how Deep Blues adjust to being unable to push in this fashion. Marsh is going to make a power clam of his own, jump in and get first blood in this game of clam blitz. That's going to be first blood, but will there be follow-up? No clams to boot with it. They're getting what they Ow. can in the meantime and, and assisting where they can. Marsh has plenty of time to do that. It seems smart for Deep Blues to kind of hold control here. Marsh going to throw uh, some clams just in case a teammate can. Oh, oh the hello! bait there with the hammer to be able to say, hi, I'm coming. Don't you see these nice shiny clams that you need to defend against? Oh, the hammer. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, there's some weird joke about, like, using hammers to break open clams. And you know what? I, I had some coffee this morning, but apparently not enough to be funny. We're just going to move on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that was a, a pretty good play from uh, Marsh. Now, unfortunately, no one from Deep Blue's jumped to him, which right. would have been, you know, the optimal situation. But, you know, you, you, you make the play where if the right thing happens, it goes really well. And if the bad thing happens, it still goes pretty decently. The rest of Deep Blue is able to get map control. Prodigy right now uh, trying to get a revenge kill for his teammate isn't able to so far. So if Deep Blue's does go down in numbers right now, it will be um, a little bit of a bad look uh, after what we saw transpire in that play before that. But I mean, you know, if things go wrong with what you're doing enough times in a row, you know, then it, you know, they start to they start to really work against you. Yeah. Well, this might be the first something of a push that we're seeing from in control here. Tenebrella is able to at least help push up. <laughs> That's a gif. That's a gif. That is, <laughs> That's that a gif. <laughs> Exclamation point hammer in chat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it looks like in control is now the team that's having difficulty actually getting a footing. Now, Deep Blues does not have a big score on the board. So, you know, any push really can change the, the outlook of this game. But from what I've seen so far, in control really can't establish dominance on the map much further than mid for a very long time. We see Dreyas getting a very skillful two, sh uh, two slash pick against a shooter, uh, you know, over some geometry. So basically, Deep Blues just playing what they need to do very well, and it looks like they're gearing up for another push. They have some specials ready. Specials at the ready. Will it be enough to at least get things going for them? The Stingray will be able to at least block them from some portions of the map as they have. Oh, since some teammates are taken out, though, Dre is just going to stay alive, not go for the push. Good friends of mine to realize that this is a dead push. Not just worth let it. those yeah. power cams despawn. Try to hold mid. Even use the special to continue holding mid. You know, just, you know, if they push up, just pop baller. Make the enemy team hesitate to push up. Your teammates will be there soon. And if you're able to do that, I mean, I think that's a one way that, uh, nice. Pick from Dr. Prodigy. Here's the baller. This might be another jump in. It's absolutely another jump in. You see at least 15 clamps oh. to boot. You see that person coming in. Will there be more? That's going to be at least the opening of the floodgates here. Two clams to boot with it. Up to the 42, 39 point marker. And Swap to come to follow that. Wow, Prodigy do, putting in work with this ink brush. It's just, I, I, I still have the gut feeling when seeing an ink brush of like the splat one, you know, an early splat two mindset of like, this like, weapon why? bad. Why? But, man, yeah. Not anymore. It looks like Prodigy is going to be able to put more points forward. No, he is not. He's going to have to back up now, which he's able to do. So with that ink brush, hold map control. Marsh has shown up, and this is just so much momentum for Deep Blues. Only a minute left in the game. It's going to have to be a huge push from in control to enable to stop this from being 2 2. Yeah. And they have all the time, resources, and clams in the world, really, to drive, to deliver on that now. Prodigy on the left side. He's been awfully distracting, moving and slipping out of the way with that ink brush. And that's, no, that's a lot of attention captured just by him alone. I mean, he himself really starting that Welcome push from the get-go. Welcome to get ink brushes. It looks like Deep Blues is able to do a non-zero amount of things. <laughs> Shield going to be broken. Prodigy's going to slap someone to death. That's and that is going to be a knockout. That game. And that is, folks. Our first game five. Folks, we have a game five. Woo. And Hitzel, if I'm being honest, I don't know if this Game 5 is going to be the Game 5 we think a Game 5 should be. This momentum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this momentum is 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 deafening. Is is It's something else right now. Taylor with that nice top score right there. Slaying as all Tenetech mains want to see. But, man, uh, the first two games did not make me think we would be in this situation right now. In Control was so dominant at the start of this set. And... Dominant through most of that tower control game, and then all of a sudden, Deep Blue has basically said, "Wait a second, we're good at this game," <laughs> and, and, and started winning. And we saw complete domination in all of that clan blitz match. Just every single time in control, tried to do something. Deep Blue was already thinking like five steps ahead. It's like, "Nah, bro, I got you. <laughs> we're gonna control the map in this way. We're gonna get this pick in that way. We're gonna keep this person alive in this other way. We're gonna use our specials properly." Everything from Deep Blue is just executed brilliantly. And now we are back to Splat Zones. And the last time we saw Splat Zones between the two teams, of course, in control, 
basically got a wipe once. Deep Blues was unable to get back Mac control, and then they, they, they just lost. So will the momentum that we've seen in the last two games transition over to this game five? You know, is a map like Wahoo World something that Deep Blues is going to be, you know, able to answer properly? Uh, kind of, if I can kind of stand up and see who's playing, it seems like Day has Day. actually yep. not subbed in. Yep. Yep, so Day's going to be sitting this one out. Nice tie, by the way, fella. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to have the the Deep Blue special, basically, at this point. We're going to have Taylor and Dreas in the slaying positions. We are going to have Marsh in support and Prodigy in backline. So I'm assuming that we're going to see the Blob Lobber either. Uh, actually, both of the Blob Lobbers, I think, could be pretty decent mm. on this map mode. It seems like Prodigy is more confident in Vanilla overall. Like He, he thinks that the, 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 the Bomb Rush one isn't the best. But I think Bomb Rush is actually pretty nice on this map. There are plenty of ways to abuse the Bomb Rush mechanics. Uh, how there's way to inst ways to insta cap zone and stuff like that with bomb mm -hmm. rush. Now you do have to worry with those uh, those kind of like um, insta cap tactics when it comes to things like a like a camera braille shield in zone, and that may be one reason to stick away from it. Sure. Or it could just be that you know Dr. Prodigy just considers the vanilla stronger overall. But we so we're we're probably going to see lots of ink storms. We're going to see some other types of map taking specials. I'm assuming we're going to see lots of baller. We may see the camo tent out of in control, but we also might see vanilla tent. That would be a really strong pick mm -hmm. out of them. Uh, even though Camo 10 is generally considered to be the better variant, um, there are lots of situations where Vanilla is good. And this map and mode is one of them. The ability to push up with their shield and those bubbles creates a lot of pseudo-invincibility for your team to push up. There. So I wonder how much of this is teams learning their, on their own how to really use and leverage the counter picks. And so far, in control Ooh, hasn't been hammer. able to do that. This is their second opportunity oh, here. Oh, so I think that is, is that, been, no, all right. So it is a camo tent. Marsh coming out with a hammer of his own, Taylor with the missiles. So basically, yeah, what we expected out of these teams, that hammer is going, out of Marsh, is going to have to come in clutch to deal yep. with the opposing hammer. Um, I mean, Kensa Mini is one of the counter picks to Camo 10 because the hammer can do stuff like that and also because the toxic miss can put in a lot of problems for the, the, the tent user, both Camo and Vanilla. So right now, Deep Blues with the opening uh, picks. They have control. They already have 20 points on the board and counting. There's a Stingray at the ready. Marsh trying to gather hammer. Uh, pick for, for in control means that they can start a, uh, a retake, and it seems like that's what they're going to do. Retake should be incoming here, although Stingray should, Ooh, I mean, jump gonna get punished. Yep. plenty of opportunity to, uh, uh, for at least Deep Blues Ooh, to come back. Hicks, somehow, I think the the, um, the Booyah Bomb took someone out. Right, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I, I would expect Deep Blues to play this one safe, wait for the Reindeer if their teammates to come back up. As definitely don't need to force a push, especially with a nice 58-point start they have right now. Ready. They, if they are able to use their specials properly, they're going to be able to get them before in control. The only problem is they don't really have the math retake specials ready quite yet. I think both teams just use hammer. Marsh pushing up with the hammer. With baller as oh, well. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, baller. Um, missiles coming down. Deep Blues losing the lead. Some teabagging right now. Just kind of putting a, an exclamation point on the dominance from in control in this situation right now. But now they're getting teammates taken out. The Blob Blobber putting in a lot of pressure. The Charger unable to get picks. What's going to happen? It looks like Deep Blues might this get a penalty here. They do. Nice. Penalty is very much needed there in that situation, but Simo's still alive Ever. with their teammate. Where did that pick come from? The anticipation from Taylor's end, oh! but that's taken out by Marsh's response there. Back and it's and forth. It's hectic in the middle. All right, what will what will Andreas do with this situation? He knows that in control wants his blood right now. He's going to go ahead and jump out. He's going to conserve his almost baller. In control, though, however, in the lead. And in control, they have no special advantage yet. But what's going to happen? How are the missiles and the hammer going to be used to push back in control? We see the missiles pushing the charger back. We hear the hammer. He takes out that splat bomb. Will the pick happen? Yes. Oh, Marsh get it taken down. And by the sniper here, it's going to be an important pick there. As it's going to be one of their two specials that for that Only push to be taken alive. down. No this penalty remaining. Bad. This is bad. It could be Deep Blues getting out of the tournament here, but they need to be able to respond quickly. And How can they do so? Yeah, I don't really know, but they're forced to pick a hand right now, even if they don't know what that hand is. Uh, and that hand is going to be hammer. taken. Destroyed here with CMO something oh is stupid. And that is going to be the set. My goodness. An absolute clap back on the Deep Blues there. Woo. And an upset. Wow, definitely an upset. Everybody rushing the stage to congratulate In Control on their victory. Man, that, 
Wow. Uh, that, 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 that match could have gone either way until substantially late in the... the At that game, point, right? Deep like, Blues were forced to a single hand, and it was very easy for In Control to play around that. Yeah, I mean, Deep 